first learned you gave yourself for me. God is your gun tonight. To steady your word, I pray that you will see it like the Lord is to see it. Now. Yes, God. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. 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 that we can be led in your spirit. We want to know where that is. Know that we're in your grace. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Tonight, my focus, the last, uh, we have talked about the name of God, the word of God, uh, the blood of Jesus, and I wanted to start on the Holy Spirit, but I, I feel like I need to lay some groundwork and just talk about God and so that everybody's on the same level or uh, just talking about the verses that talk about God. And one of the most predominant verses is in Deuteronomy 6.4. This is called the Shema. This is the verse that uh, Jewish people would start their morning with, quoting this verse and throughout the day ending their day repeating this verse again and teaching their children this verse uh, talking about it Deuteronomy 6 4 says hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord In verse 5 it says and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might now Jesus repeated the words of the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4, in Mark chapter 12 and verse 29. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, one Lord. And the next verse, verse 30 says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And I'll read you the next verse too because it talks about the second. <coughs> second commandment in verse 31. The second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. We find that this is the royal commands. In other words, love God first, and then love your neighbor. And when you do this, you fulfill all the law. You won't break the law if you are obedient to those two verses. Our God is one. I want you to know that when it's hero Israel, the Lord our God is one, but he is just one one God and I want to emphasize that he does not have multiple personalities 1st Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6 says but to us there is but one God the Father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him now i'm going to go over into ephesians chapter 4 and just now i was reading you out of first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6 that's where it says but to us there is but one god the father of whom are all things and we in him and one lord jesus christ by whom are all things, and we by him. In Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll read you verses 4 to 6, this is what that passage says. It says, There's one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Verse 5 says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And verse 6 says, One God and Father of all. 
who is above all and through all and in you all. I hope you are, are catching on to the emphasis on one, that God is one. In James, the book of James, chapter 2, and verse 19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. One God. I hope you hear that. Multiple verses speaking of God as being one. In my uh, daily readings, I am going through Isaiah. And just in the last few weeks, uh, I'll read you out of Isaiah 42, 43, and 44. Just not all of it. I, I'd put you to sleep if I read it to you. All of it. But in Isaiah 42 and verse 8, it says, I am the Lord, that is my name. Th that's all in caps, too. We talked about that when we talked about the name of God. That capital L-O-R-D, all caps, is Yahweh. He says, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to an another, neither my praise to graven images. And I want you to, as I'm reading in Isaiah, and uh, it's the Lord speaking, I want you to notice that it's in the singular. Singular means one. If it was plural, there would be many, more than one. So as I look in Isaiah 43, I look here and it says in, in verse 3, Isaiah 43 verse 3 says, I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethia and Seba for thee. In verse 10, it says, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. That's, do you see the singular sense there? I am alone, there's none before me, no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Verse 11 says, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. In verse 12 it says, I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. In verse 13 it says, Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? And verse 14 it says, Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer. Now, I want to just catch your attention there to Redeemer, because last week we talked about the redeeming factor of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in verse 14 here of Isaiah 43, 14, it tells us that the Lord says that he is the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. And verse 15, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Now, I'm going to stop there in Isaiah 43 and look at 44, chapter 44. In verse uh, 6, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Now, you know, we, not too long ago, did a study in the book of Revelation. How many times do we see that the Lord says, 
I am the first mm -hmm. and the last. I am the Alpha and Omega, He who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. That's Revelation 1.8. So, um, but this emphasis is there, and it's singular. And then in verse 8, it says, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time, and have declared it? You are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any singular all of those verses I, I and I just want to it, em, emphasize that God does not have multiple personalities okay I just but you stop me if, if I'm confusing you or I'm saying something that you've never heard before or um, just questions or something you want to add something I've read this year the other day. I've read it uh, dozens of times, I'm sure, but it just really stared at me. It says in Hebrews 1, 8, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God. Say it, say it, uh, Hebrews 1, 8. Uh -huh. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. That is, thus saith the Lord, saying to the Son, O oh God. I mean, he's just declaring he's one with him. Right. They're one. Yes, they are one. Yeah, that's what it says. It's pretty clear there. Yes, yes it is. Over and over in Scripture, you see that God is one. Yes. And, and um, I understand people sometimes are confused when you talk about the Father mm -hmm. and the Son and the Holy Ghost. I didn't feel like I could get into a study on the Holy Spirit if I did not make it clear that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, that there is yes. only one God. Yes. But uh, I'll get there here just mm -hmm. shortly. It says, when I say I'd like to speak about the Holy Spirit, I'm not speaking in terms that would make the Holy Spirit separate and distinct from our God as the Father or from our Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. I have heard various preachers through the years explain God in comparison to water. And I'm probably you have too. Water can be a liquid. You gotta have it. You gotta drink it. You got you need it. When it freezes it becomes ice. Right? That's a different form. When heated it evaporates as steam. And yet it is all water. Yeah, it's all water. Have you heard that analogy yes, as in comparison to God mm -hmm. that like water you can see three different forms uh -huh. of that water mm -hmm. um, in T -G, T -G Jakes. I did hear TD Jakes yeah. use that, yeah, that analogy, analogy yeah, about yeah. water and, and that's been years ago Genesis 127 says so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them now when i think about this i i don't know i, I understand that people have different perceptions and understandings of verses but when i think about god and when he created us in his image that I see that we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Right. When I read Genesis 2, 7, it says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. You know that he's talking about the body, your body, from dust to dust. You were made from dust, and when you die, you'll return to that dust. Mm -hmm. Scripture is very plain there. When he breathed, it says, and breathed into his nostrils 
the breath of life that is your spirit your spirit and it says a man became a living soul your soul you have a body you have a spirit and you have a soul but you are one you are one and when it talks about us being made in god's image i'm not thinking that oh it's because now you have a head and you've got two eyes and a nose and yeah, that your appearance is as his appearance that may be true because i believe jesus looked just like us or we are just like him we were created in his image but we have that spirit soul well, it says and body first thessalonians 5 23 said in the very god of peace sanctify you holy i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the lord jesus christ and that's saying jesus has provided the blood for our soul to to save our soul he had provided the spirit for our spirit to be birthed and connected with him and he provided the baptismal waters to take care of the sins of the flesh and that's what he said i pray you're holy your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless amen amen I thank that's you that's how i connect those together that's good that is good spirit soul and body in Isaiah, I haven't moved off of Isaiah, and I'm looking at 43. And the first verse, it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Uh, and look at verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, thy Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. 14 and 15 in that chapter, Isaiah 43, 14 and 15 says, Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon and brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. 15 says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Our Lord, Yahweh, is our Redeemer, Savior. Now, you, you know, when we talked about the name, Philippians chapter 2 says that he was highly exalted and given a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus. You know, when um, the angel spoke in Matthew 1, and told Joseph, you're going to call his name Jesus. That means Savior. Jesus is our Savior. When we did our study about the blood, and we know that it's the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. but I just want you to realize that still it is just one God. In, um, I'm going to go to Acts chapter 20. And look at verse 28. It says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy, Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Do you see that? Where, where, where is it again? It's Acts 20, 28. And it's talking about the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Ghost purchased you with his own blood and so when i read that and i think about it i think of first corinthians 5 19 this god was mm -hmm. in christ mm -hmm. reconciling the world unto himself ada did you have something you want to add there you you had a look on your face well i'm just trying to remember where that scripture is. it says the lord is that spirit referring to Jesus connecting that with that okay I didn't write that one down okay, I'll tell so you there are so I many know, there are. so many mm -hmm. verses that talk about God as one and, and and here's the why I'm going through this is that 
I have seen people misuse and mislabel and use words or terminology that is totally unscriptural. In other words, yeah. you cannot back it up with scripture. And to me, if you're going to teach or preach, you need to have it founded in the Word of God. Just know that... Uh, let me do that. 2 Corinthians 5.19 God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. That's how I can justify seeing in Acts 20, 28 that it's the Holy Ghost that had made you overseers yes. to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Just remember there's only one God. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And Galatians 3.20 says, Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Do you know that you and I, when we were talking about atonement with the blood of Jesus, that the blood of Jesus made the atonement. I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. That's Leviticus 17 and 11. That atonement was to bring us back to God. We were alienated by the sin. The sin separated us and we needed a mediator. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. He had to go to the cross to bring him back to himself to reconcile us to himself you have all these verses that say God is one realize when you read verses like uh, Philippians uh, the first chapter and verse 2 it says grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. There are not two separate gods. You know, because multiple times when you're looking in the scripture that you will see God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why a lot of people are distinguishing and saying, well, there's two. Because yeah. you got God our Father and you got our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But you just have to realize, hey, if you've got your Bibles open and you're looking there in Philippians, just, just a second here. Philippians. I want to go to the second chapter. I just read you out of the first mm -hmm. chapter where it says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look over there in uh, chapter 2, and I'll read you verses 5 to 8, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross do you see that how that was god in christ reconciling the world to himself um, is this a good time to go on to the second part? I don't know how our yeah, time is. Yeah. So.